Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, we, I'm recording. Yeah, I'm recording right now, and I'm Vince with Listings to Leads, and and we're talking to the Costello uh, Real Estate Group, um, and we're gonna we're gonna focus first, uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, on Facebook. So uh, you, I'm gonna kind of walk you through what it's like for an agent to to get into the system and what it's going to be like for you as well. So this is when we log in, there's always a jump page in the middle. And we do have live training classes on uh, on Facebook every Tuesday. And then the core tools, uh, which is getting started, we do every Monday. And when we click out of here, we always put kind of the latest tips. We do a quick webinar. This Neil Wolf is doing really killer lead generation with one of our tools on Craigslist. So I am going to point out that tool uh, because not a lot of people think about Craigslist uh, lately. They used to a few years back, um, but this guy's been generating in the beginning about 50 leads a day from Craigslist, and I'll show you the tool that he's using. Um, and now, because he's been doing it in his area for a while, it's kind of trickled down to 50 a week, but that combined with Facebook is pretty much all he's doing. And then here is somebody that uh, did something slightly different. And we always put the new and kind of like great stories that we hear from our group in that in, in, on that jump page. Also, there is a page for you guys to join uh, our mastermind group. And that's an important place because this is where our clients go and talk about what's working, right? And they'll, they'll actually show, hey, this is what my ads look like. These are what are, and it's also the first place where we announce our new tools. So we add new tools to the system on average about every two weeks, sometimes faster. Um, and by seeing, by going into that mastermind group, you're going to get a lot of tips of a little bit more about how to, especially when we talk about Facebook, I'm going to actually walk you through how to run an ad on Facebook. We're going to have this recorded and you can always look back at this and go, okay, this is how I do it. But there is part that really makes the thing work well is when you write something a little more unique. And we'll talk about that when you put the right photograph to make that page, that ad pop, things like that. And so that's going a little bit beyond default, like just use a default listing lead tools and really putting just a little bit behind it to get a ton of traction. I know you guys have been in real estate for a while, so you probably have a lot of those concepts on the top of your head anyway. But let's click over here on Facebook advertising. It's the green button on the left. And here we actually go into how to create one of the key landing pages. What is your home worth, right? Uh, we also up here show you how to run the ad. Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna actually run the ad here in a couple of minutes. But in case you forget it and you lose this video, you'll have it here, right? To to kind of review. Um, and then there here are some webinars from other agents that do just incredible work in uh, in lead generation. Um, and then down here, just so you know, we have a really great open house toolkit. So if you save the date on the listing, and this is true if you're a listing agent, if you've got the listing, or if you're somebody you just, you're going to sit there for the afternoon and hold an open house, they should be using this to generate leads for that open house. I don't know if you, if you guys saw last year, there was kind of a discussion, I think, on Inman and Zillow about is it a waste of time? Is it not in the in the in the homeowner's interest for you to hold an open house for them? And, th- and they were kind of saying it's just it's not really in their interest. It's a waste of your own time. And I think if you do normal marketing for open houses, that might be true. But if you use the handful of tools that we create, they all are great at generating leads before, during, and even after the open house. So all you do is set up the date, and we email the tools to you automatically. There's also a listing presentation. Um, and on this listing presentation, you can download it at the bottom. There's some, there's a video here on how to present it. Um, and then, but down here is kind of the, the tool here. And then right here, you download it. You pop up, you drop your, your, uh, your uh, what do you call it? Your logo in it. And you can change your name on it. And it's just, it's great because once you look at our tools of everything we do to market listings, there really aren't a lot of companies that can compete and there certainly are not a lot of agents that have all these tools in one spot. So that listing presentation makes it very easy. It's very graphical. It's not a bunch of reading to, for an agent to just convey, hey, this is everything we're going to do. So when we talk about Facebook, 
there are kind of two uh, two big areas. There's a listing area, and this is how the listings come in, and and we sort of feed those in automatically. And then there is a landing page area, and this is probably one of the most kind of exciting things in real estate in the past, I'd say, 12 months, is realtors are starting, you know, I think for X number of years, the message to realtors and offices, hey, you got to have an awesome website and awesome SEO, and you got to put everything in there to get these consumers there, and it's just going to make your business grow. And that's a great story. But one of the current stories that we certainly see happening is, hey, if you have a landing page, that has one thing in mind, get a certain bit of information to a consumer. And in return for that, they need to give you their contact information. Well, that works a little bit better than a, than a website where they can click here and click there and get lost and, and you really don't get a lead and anything to act on, right? So landing pages, whether it's for, you know, your family is growing, you want your home value, you want to see homes nearby that have sold by you. If you maybe have a FISBO or maybe you have an expired listing or you just want you know, a list of, of, uh, of condos or, or short sales, these are just unique pages, pages that do this, right? And they do nothing else. They don't talk about the schools in the area. They don't talk about mortgage rates or anything like that. It's just, hey, go here and fill this out. So I'm going to click on a property valuation landing page and this is, this is like one of the key things that our clients get excited about. So I'm going to fill this out for you real quick. And before I fill it out, I want to kind of, you know, I kind of talk and I click around and I know, you, you know, follow sometimes what I'm saying. We have property valuation plus, we have property valuation, and we have property valuation plus one. So there's a little bit of code here. of what, These almost say the same things, but what's the difference? Property valuation is a page that says, give me your address. And on the next page, it says, great, I'll get you the valuation. Give me your email address and phone number if you like. And if you don't know about this kind of tool, there I, I'd say 80% of people will walk away before they give you an email address. They think in the front, oh, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that answer right now by giving the address. And it says, oh, great, we'll give it to you, but we need your contact info. And then about 80% of people will walk away. This page here looks almost identical, but it has a built-in Zillow estimate in it. And it's written a little bit differently. We're actually gonna walk through it. But in the end, it says, we're gonna send you this valuation right now. And we sent it to this email address, All right? And if, you, and if somebody gave you like a Mickey Mouse at Disney.com, well, then they know, oh, I'm not gonna get it. And it gives them an option to say, if you want it in another email address, put it there. We're gonna look at that in a second. But that being said, the page still gets, you know, 80, 90% of the people will walk away without giving you the contact information. And they're just like, oh, I don't want to get that, right? Over here on plus one, this page says we've got your home valuation, but we're not going to, you can't move past page one because we're asking you for the email address right up front. So your lead gen totally drops off. Now there are real there are realtors that feel like I don't care I don't want an I don't want a a lead without an email and I understand. And then there are many agents that feel like I don't care I I'd rather have more addresses because I can go to um I can go to the tax records and find out the homeowner and I can put them on some kind of campaign a dirt campaign and, and I just want to know who's there who's interested who's thinking about their home value. And then here we have a partial lead converter which is actually uh, coal information services and if you know them they're kind of like an online phone book and if you have if you subscribe to that and an agent can subscribe to that or you can subscribe, subscribe to office if you get leads from here and 80 percent of them just give you an address every time you get just an address we scrape the the coal information system and we give you the full contact information that coal has 60 to 70 percent of the time that means you're getting a phone number and or an email and this is just a great way of like getting more seller leads. So let's now go through and look at how this page works. Okay, so I'm gonna just type in, what is your address? And we'll talk, after we see how it works, we'll talk about how, um, how uh, 
how do you get it in the market? Because right? that's really the key. Um, so go here and it says, great. You put in your address. What we're doing here is verifying. We want to get kind of buy-in, right? And it says, great, is your home a 3-2 and uh, something like this? Yes. And then you click here, it shows you a picture of your house over here. So it, you kind of get the sense that, oh, whatever this is, it knows what's going on, right? It, it's, it's not like super random. And so we're getting kind of yeah. buy-in. And then it says, great, we have the valuation. What's your contact info? And I say, oh, well, my contact info is whatever. Why are you interested? Uh, I need to sell soon. Uh, I need to refi. Thinking about selling. Whatever they put, it's going to go there. And they click click report. And then let's just sort of see what happens. It says, great. Success up in green. It says your property valuation for this address has been mailed. And I got something opened up here. Um, actually, got a couple things. Uh, but we'll, we'll stay here for a second. It says, this has been sent to the email address you gave us. And if you did not get it and want to send it to another email, click here. And we do this, you know, we've been doing this a while. We do this because people will give you a fake address. And then the agent's like, oh, that's kind of lame because they got the contact. They got the information they wanted. And I got mickeymouse.com, right? So what it looks like from an agent or from a consumer's point of view is they got this, right? So it says, Dear Vincent Mesa, if you're thinking about selling your home, we have to, you know, just some, some basic information, gives them the estimate, and then it gives that there and your contact information is here. And that's, that's the whole gist of it. You as the agent, and I couldn't click around fast enough, get, um, get the lead with that information. So the, the first thing you should do is say, hey, I just see you got a valuation and it was for 300. Does that number sound right to you? Did you do anything else, right? And get that dialogue going and that's that's conversion, right? This here, as a side note, is the signature bar that is actually available for every agent. And it has your contact info, it would have uh, your, uh, your, 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 your name and email, but it also has these lead links and these are really important to all of listings to leads. We'll jump into it in a minute. But these links are built into all of our home, all of our tools. And they point to your website wherever you want it, right? Now, this is just pointing to one of our, our clients' websites because I was testing some things. But that's the nature of the property valuation landing page. And so the key there, once you understand how it works, is, well, how do I get in front of people, right? And that the number one fastest and easiest way is to put it on Facebook, right? So let's do that. Let's do that. And do you have any questions right now for what you've seen so far? I have one question. Um, is there a way that we can, like, it, it can be sent to the to the agent's uh, website as well? The landing page. Yes. Yeah, like can you forward it and think if the consumer clicks on some of those links you just showed us? Yes. Yeah, for you know, every agent. Home for, home for sale, can, can, the, can we put in the agent, if they have their own individual website yeah. that has certain tools and features, can you forward it to that? Correct. Yes. That's right. right. And, we'll, and I'm going to show you more about those links after this part. But I do want to show you this part because it's pretty exciting. This is really for people that want to grow their business and their and their really intent on that. We see that Facebook has is one of the great areas. But the core uh, system for marketing listings and those lead generation, that's part of our, uh, the, the lead generation links are part of our system. So yeah, that every agent can can have those links go to where they want, right? Okay, great. And did they set that up or did we set that up? Usually um, we set up at the office level some core links, but they want to they want to remap them and they can edit those inside their own account. You could do it if you want. It's kind of depending on, on the agent. You may feel like, hey, it's just going to be better if we set it up for them. Um, and so I can show you how to do that. But they'll be able to do that within their profile either way. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Yeah. So one thing I'd like to do before I run, I don't want to run this ad. I want to run, I want to create a new one because I want to show you 
what's going to happen, what you want to do with a new agent when you're onboarding them into the system. So what's the number one town where you grow, where you want to grow business, where you think your agents are going to want to kind of get leads, where they'll be farming? Oh, I mean, there's so many. Um, Let's just pick one. You can have, you can add them all, but we're just going to do one right now. Uh, just for simplicity, do Huntersville, North Carolina. Huntersville. Okay. So all you got to do is type in Huntersville in this box right here and click save. So if you got a new agent, oh, postpone. Sorry. If you've got a new agent, go in, type in Huntersville. And they may have like five or six areas where they want to do this. And you can see here, there's a little message that says your series has been created. That means that now I have a Huntersville page under every button. I'm now on the FISBO page here, right? So I have a landing page to send to a FISBO. Hey, I see you're selling. Would you like some free marketing tools? And then of course, there's contact information. That's a great way of getting FISBOs and in, in, you know, getting relationships going with FISBOs. Um, and then it just sort of goes from there. You've got a landing page for expireds, for empty nesters in, Huntings, in Huntersville. But let's go here to Property Valuation Plus and let's look at what that looks like right off the bat. And it looks like this. Now, does that picture look like Huntersville? Yeah, yeah. It could. It's kind of, okay, it's kind of, that's, we pick it like that. But let's talk about what state is it in? I, I'm sorry, I can't remember. Huntersville, what? North Carolina? Yes. Okay. That that Lafayette page that I keep showing you is uh, is, is like a reservoir in Lafayette. This is where I live, right? And, and Lafayette's a small town, you know, twenty five thousand people, and that's at the center of town. And it's there's this big two and a half mile walk. So if you live in Lafayette, or if you even live within five miles of Lafayette, everybody knows like this is a great place to walk your dog and your kids and and their strollers or just take a jog or whatever. And everybody in Lafayette knows that thing, right? So if you're running an ad and you don't want to look like super generic and I don't know what this is about, use something that is like right, you know, that totally is going to jog somebody's mind. So go to Google to get this kind of photo. You may have them. You may be paying for these or whatever. But you can just, I'm going to show you the way because this is really where a lot of agents get kind of stuck. It's like, oh, I want to do this, but I don't know what to do. And click on images. Click on search tools. Is that right? Search tools. Go on size. And you want it to be larger than four megapixels. It's also nice to go to usage rights labeled for reuse. So I'm not sure which one of these kind of looks like your area, right? But I'm going to just pick this one here. Let's see if that's any good. Yeah, let's just click this. Because sometimes downtown images totally work, right? And I, like, I don't know how big Huntersville is, but if there's a big landmark or whatever, then, you know, by all means get it. But I'm gonna just save this image as uh, here, right here. And we're just gonna imagine this is it. And, and, and I, think, uh, I think, John, I, I might've mentioned this to you. I, I've got a client who is in Summit, New Jersey, right? And it's a, another small town. And uh, I'm gonna just show you what this guy does. And he runs these ads, right? And, and he puts this image of like, it's an old diner, right? It's a 1920s railroad car converted into a restaurant with booths and all that, right? This is the number one picture that gets him seller leads because everybody this has been here for like i don't know 50 something years it's right on main street everybody knows it so they, people are looking at it oh yeah this is something from my town so it so i'm just trying to convey what you got to think of. It, go ahead that's what you're saying post a picture that people can identify with that town so you just it looks more real totally totally so before we do that Let's go down to where we clicked on C landing page. Let's click on edit. And right here it says landing page image and desktop and oh, where did I do that? Right there. 
There's one other thing I like to change. And there and you know this there are a lot of things that you can do. If I'm not talking about them, ignore them. Okay. And and I know you guys are smart and you're tech savvy and you can do all kinds of great things with this. But this is like the basics of what I want everybody to do. Um, click here. Oh wait, 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 wait. Get your answer in less than 15 seconds. And I'll show you why and where this this message here, where it starts to show. So I'm going to save an update. And give that a second. And this here, this is what the page looks like. What is your Huntersville home worth now? Get your answer here. So let's just refresh this. And now it should look like your downtown street. And what is your yeah. hundreds of home now? And get your answer in less than 15 seconds. So this is where we want to kind of run, start running an app, right? And Once you have this set up, day, right? You keep doing it, you keep using it over and over. Sorry, what's that, John? Once it's set up, this landing page for a certain town or multiple towns, it's in your, it's in your, yeah. So it'd be neat if one of our agents dashboard moving forward and have to read through the image and all that. Correct. Correct. They, you know, let, let's say you set up an agent and you say, what's your top five areas? And they'll say, oh, uh, it's Huntersville and it's thisville and it's this town. And you just save each one. And then you'll have multiple, like if I click here, you'll see I have multiple things here. And then you could like have the photos. For me, if you figure, there are 10 areas where we know our agents want to build their business. You might want to have those images on hand and just say, hey, everybody, go to this, you know, go to this file and use these images if you want to do it or help them sort of create them. But at that point, they are there and they can use them in any way they want. OK, so let's talk about the number one way to use a seller landing page like this, and that is on Facebook. The first thing you want to do is obviously set it up and copy the hyperlink at the top. Just right click copy and then go over here to Facebook. Now, everybody that's going to do this, they need a business page, right? And once you do that, you will see that up on the top. So don't do it in your, don't is, do it in your personal page. <laughs> no, exactly. No, you can't, you, you can't physically even do it. Uh, it will only okay. drive it through a business page. So here I'm going to go to create ads. And hopefully this works well for me. And it's giving me a little message because I have a pop up block. I have a I have an ad blocker, so I don't see ads all over the place, but you won't see that. But you will see this or some version of this. And what you want to do is send people to your website. OK. And yeah. then it says, what website? And it is the website that we copied, which is our property valuation page for Huntersville. Um, it also says you can create a campaign name and that might be useful. You might want things that are, you know, that you know, uh, these are maybe just listed ads or maybe these are Huntersville ads or maybe these are seller lead gen ads. Facebook Pixels is pretty cool, but if you're not super tech savvy, ignore it. I don't train any of our clients to use Facebook pixels and they get hundreds of leads. And, and so it's not anything that you need to get into. It is a great distraction for many agents. So, so you can choose it as you like. Um, what you need to do now is click set ad audience and budget. And this is one of the most powerful things. This is why Facebook is ridiculously powerful and you should be using it for all marketing. Right. In, in the way that we feel like, uh, let's see here, define a new audience. So we're going to define a new audience. And what it's doing by default is saying everybody in the United States. That's not what I want. I want to do, um, let's see, what is the zip code for Huntersville? But if you don't know, it's okay. It is better to run an ad, especially this kind of ad, based on zip code. But since we don't know it off the top of our head, I am going to say Huntersville, North Carolina. And we kind of, we learned something a little bit differently by, by doing it this way. And I, I need you to kind of... 2078, this is it. 
<clears throat> oh, 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 okay, let me get rid of it. Let me just show you one thing here. And, and this is a bit of learning for you two, for all of you. It may not be something that you wanna get into with agents, but it is really important. When I typed in Huntersville, it defaults 25 miles out. And that might actually be good if you're saying, I've got an open house, or I am, uh, have a home just sold or just listed. But because this page is specifically about Huntersville, we don't want a, any radius at all. They have to live in Huntersville. So I'm gonna click on current city only, and it shows me that they have to live in Huntersville to be able to see this. Now, homeowners in your area are probably not, you know, I'm gonna say there's a minimum age of 28, okay? Um, and that's, and it's telling you the potential reach is 41,000. So that's about, you know, those are the adults on Facebook in Huntersville, all right? And this can potentially reach those folks. Now, the different way, you gave me the zip code, and, and I will tell you this about the zip code. We could, we could actually get rid of Huntersville, um, and we could type in the zip code, and it would show us exactly there. One thing that we see, and it's definitely worth A-B testing in your market, is that if you run an ad based on a zip code, you get a, ba a better pay-per-click rate. Your dollars go further on your ad spend here, okay? Huntersville, we're going to do it now because I wanted you to see what the radius is about and when to use I usually recommend to our clients, if you're running an ad talking about a listing, do it in a 10 mile radius, right? 10 miles, because you want a lot of people to know that you are in real estate. So you want them to be able to see that. But because this is a property valuation and that page only talks about Huntersville, we want to make sure that's yeah. Huntersville, okay? Uh, I will point well, we out, do, what's that? Should we do Repeat that, John. I'm sorry. Are we better off doing zip code for property? Yeah. For Are we better doing town or zip code for property valuation? You're better off doing zip code for property valuation. Okay. That's okay. Right. It's a better pay-per-click rate. We, we have seen it time and time again. There is detailed targeting here, and um, we don't typically drive into this, but it actually, you can say I want to s only homeowners to see it. Uh, you can say, I want people with a certain net worth to see it, but I really don't know where those data sets come from. So we don't get into training on that. We don't teach our clients how to do that, but some clients say, I, I use those things and I get great results. I've had other clients say, I use those things and I get no results. So I'm showing you the basic way where our clients get results. And you can certainly go in there and detail targeting and kind of do some other cool stuff, right? Excluding people. One thing that people like to exclude is other realtors. So you may want to do that or not, it's, you, but that's your, your choice. Here is really where we get into the, uh, the, the gist of it, right? The, the budget. So I need you to understand that there are two kinds of ads to run. There's an ad for property valuation, seller leads, and there's a, an ad for buyer leads and branding. Okay, and the thing about this, while I am showing you the technical how-tos and how you do it, I am gonna talk a little bit about the, the, the broader strategy of how you really start killing it on Facebook and really start snowballing uh, lead generation in your business. And part of it has to do with creating ads for branding and creating ads for lead gen. And this one, seller leads, is where you really want to kind of focus. So understand this about seller leads. And this is how you get started. I recommend that you run these ads on the weekend, okay? And I also recommend, I'm gonna do a lifetime budget and just, we'll, we'll look at this. We're gonna change our lifetime budget to 60 bucks. Uh, what happened there? $60. And it's gonna give me a little fl a flag here because that's not enough money. So what I want to do, and, and I, as you're getting started, I always want you guys to be doing it this way. Run property valuation ads on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it's pushing, it's giving me a red flag because this is like a month long ad, but you only want to run these things for about three days. So what it's telling me is my total spend is $60. That means lifetime budget 
is I can only spend $60. The difference on lifetime budget or daily budget, and we've, we've learned this from, from Facebook. We actually have had a few calls with the Facebook. I don't know what you call them, account manager or something. Um, if you do it as daily budget, you're still gonna maximum spend $60. But Facebook can tell when more people are on. So let's say they, they're gonna spend your dollars more wisely if you leave it on a lifetime budget for 60 bucks. Same 60 bucks, you're probably gonna get better lead gen with lifetime budget. So I wanna point out over here what's going on. It says estimated daily reach, 870 to 2000 on Facebook. That means, oh, maybe 1500 people a day will see this. Since it's three days, that's about 5,000 people. And that's good to have 5,000 people recognize that you're a realtor, right? In this case, because we're putting 60 bucks, this is pay per click right and that means for every click facebook is going to chew up i don't know 50 cents 75 cents and that's a big issue and that you have to sort of understand and guys I, i'm sorry if this is like feeling really techy and really deep but because it's you you need to know this and your agents may not want to know this but some definitely will the longer you spend a consistent budget on facebook the better your pay-per-click becomes. They give you better rates. They can sort of see it. I don't know if it's an algorithm or whatever, but they can see, oh, this person's spending a couple hundred bucks a month. So in the beginning, we were giving them 75 cents a click. Now we're giving them 30 cents a click. And I have clients, and you can see it on our, on our mastermind group, that people are paying seven cents a click, 17 cents a click. It just starts going down because you're, you're, you're doing consistent business with Facebook. This particular ad, you probably get four or 5,000 people looking at it over the weekend. Doesn't mean that they can click on it because that is a factor of your pay-per-click, right? And since it's 20, you know, almost 20 bucks a day, in the beginning, it's usually like, I don't know, 60, 75 cents a click. You can sort of do math, you'll get X number of clicks. And for the clicks, it means that they look at the page, but maybe they don't fill it out and then you have all those things as well. So th this is just important stuff. I recommend that when you're running an ad for seller lead gen, begin on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You don't have to put 20 bucks a day, 10 bucks a day You know, will work if you wanna sort of get comfortable and test it and make sure you're doing it right. But $5 a day is the lowest that Facebook allows. And sometimes agents try that and they're not really excited about their lead gen. And that's because for five bucks, they can really only get like, I don't know, eight clicks a day. And then some percentage of those people won't even fill it out. But that's kind of the, you know how that works. Let's now click choose ad creative. And this shows us what the ad's actually gonna look like. And here I was saying it's a good time to be part of our mastermind group because people literally say, this is what my ad looks like and I got like X number of leads, right? And there's some stuff up here and you'll know that I, I kind of skipped it, but you can certainly, if you wanna add more images and have it change, that's cool stuff. If you wanna put a video, that's cool too. But what I want you to understand is that this right here is what the ad looks like to the consumer. And it shows up in the desktop newsfeed by default. And that's, that's the number one place you want it. It's right in the center of the Facebook page. So I'm gonna get into a little bit of detail here. Um, so you kinda, gotta kinda have to follow. It, over here it says Huntersville Home Values. It is the same here, right, Hunter, Huntersville Home Values. But this text here is a little too generic for me. And one thing I like to say, and, and again, our mastermind group gives some great ideas, is, but I'm gonna give you one that worked really well and has worked really well for a lot of our clients. Click here to get your online automated home evaluation in less than 15 seconds and when I type that whatever I typed in this box shows up over here above the picture right there are other things that people write and, and the mastermind group is great for this and, and uh, just to give you some ideas uh, this home went under contract in less than seven days uh, click here to get your home value this and they'll show a picture of a particular home right and they'll say this home sold for 10 percent over asking click here to get your own value right whatever gets people motivated 
use that kind of language to wrap around this ad. Now I want to point out a couple things here. You'll notice it says sponsored by listings to leads. This is going to be for you or your agent sponsored by John the Realtor at Costello or whatever it is your, your business page says. And that speaks to the branding because like I said, in this particular case for 60 bucks, about 5,000 people are gonna start realizing that you're in real estate, right, on Facebook. Whether they like your page, whether they know you exist, that's just what's gonna happen. Down here is call to action and that is the kind of, and I've chosen learn more, it gives you a button here. Whether the consumer clicks here, here, or here, they're going to land on the landing page. That's just what it's designed to do. There's also a section here that says show advanced options. I'm going to show you this now. We may come back here and look at it again. As you can see above and around this picture, there's very limited characters. But if you have something kind of un unique to say, and usually this has to do with a home, like open house or uh, just listed, there might be something you know, really special um, about this home, right? And if you want people to see that, then type it in this box and it will show up underneath here, right? And so again, that's just as you're creating the ad. That, that's some of the techniques. But I do want to talk to you a little bit about this and I need you to understand the difference of these sections here. Mobile newsfeed is a, um, it means is this going to be on, on mobile? And as you know, I'm, I'm going to assume half the people in the US hit Facebook on, on mobile. And our pages are all mobile optimized, right? This is mobile optimized, okay? Uh, and that's great, but it doesn't mean that even though I click on it, that I actually want to fill out something on my phone. Um, and so you kind of want to be careful with that. You'll also, but especially if you're running it, and it kind of depends on what kind of ad you're running. Since we're running property valuation, there are a couple of pages that you got to kind of get through, right? So that doesn't, not a lot of people like to do that. And this is usually what I say is start without mobile, just remove it. If you're running property valuation, if you're running an ad for uh, open house or just listed or just sold, definitely use mobile because then it, you just want people to see that you're a realtor. So always use mobile in that. But when you're doing property valuation ads, you might not want to do that. The desktop right column is the right side of Facebook. And if you don't know what that looks like, I'm gonna kind of jump over real quick and hopefully we can see that. Let's see, just to give you an idea of what this is. This, is, this middle column is, the, is where the ad's gonna show up. Desktop right column is over here. Now I've been in computers on the internet since the internet began, and I am already trained not to look over here to the right. And when we had a call with Facebook, they said, if you want better results, remove desktop right column. So I'm gonna just share that with you, that I don't really recommend that. We recommend it being in the newsfeed and you gotta kind of think about, uh, and the newsfeed again is right here. Um, because the newsfeed is the only thing seen when you're looking at it on a phone, right? It's, that's all you see, you just sort of scroll through and pictures of cats and food and whatever. And then this kind of thing is gonna show up right there, right? So Instagram, you can test it. I haven't really heard lots of results. I know there's always excitement about that. When we start hearing great results about any platform anywhere, we will be talking about it. So I haven't really heard much about it. So you can test it and see if it works in your market. But this ad, um, because it is property valuation, I don't want to use mobile and I control what this you know information looks like. So from here, you just click place order and it will be out, in this case, it would be out over the weekend for three days. And at the end, they will actually tell me, this is how many people saw it, and here's how many people clicked on it, okay? And that's what you, that's what you wanna know. From us, you're gonna know how many leads you got because we're gonna start emailing them to you, okay? So that's how you run a property valuation ad on Facebook. Any, any questions about that section? No. Okay.
No, I guess uh, I might have missed it, but the Instagram, if we don't really use Instagram, still post it on there? Because hmm. they're connected? I don't even know. You know, I, I don't even think, well, I don't even know exactly how the app looks. I think they can actually click through it. But Facebook will push it to Instagram just as an ad, even if you don't have your own account there. There are there, okay. there are some agents that have really robust um, Instagram accounts because you know it's so visual and you know I, I actually am on Instagram and I follow uh, you know designers and stuff like that. So there are you know there is a reason for Instagram and because it is a photographic um, social media platform, there you know it, it makes some sense because real estate is a ton of photos. Uh, also along that. Um, uh, uh, train of thought, uh, Pinterest has a lot of uh, relevance to real estate as well. We do see that people posting our tools on Pinterest get a fair amount of click throughs. It's, it's actually the number two website in terms of referral traffic, meaning if I do something on Facebook and I want them to click and get away from Facebook and go somewhere else, Facebook is number one, but Pinterest is number two in all the social medias. YouTube, way off the cliff. It's way down there. Right, Twitter way down at the bottom. Google, same thing. I recommend that you you go there anyway from a seller's point of view, and you as marketing a home for a seller. It I think it's wise, especially because it just takes a couple seconds to 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 share to those networks because you're basically understand that I can I can tackle all uh, social media, and that I think is a, is a good thing. Um, so let's now talk a little bit about, this is where our core stuff is. These are the tools and we are gonna go through them in, in a second. But I do want you to understand that what I just showed you on Facebook is the simplest way of thinking about getting seller lead generation. And this is something that a lot of realtors just stop right there. It's like, that's what I'm looking for, right? And, and you probably know there's at least a half dozen companies with a technology that looks similar and acts a little bit like this, right? There's bold leads, there's curator, there's prime seller, there's all these uh, home value, and the list just keeps going on, right? And you can talk to them and listen to their story of what they do, and it's in, in very different model. Usually they're charging the agent to say, I'll do this for you. And then they do just what I just showed you. And they run that ad for 30 days, and but in their business model, the agent pays 200 300 a month um and the curator, the curator charges 1500 a month <laughs> yeah yeah and you get x number of leads right it's like you're gonna get this you're gonna get i don't know so i've had people call, call me and say i'm getting charged 300 a month for 12 leads a month okay and then they come to, to us and they go but you have these tools that look just like them and they work actually better than those tools so what i want you to understand is yeah, this is how you copy and paste a link and write an ad, and that's good. But I've got clients who take about $300 a month and put it on Facebook advertising, and they wind up at the end of the month with 200 to 300 leads. Usually around 50% of them are seller leads. This is the kind of pipeline that gets our clients excited, and this is what I want you to understand, okay? So I did just show you how to run a seller ad, but I want you to understand that you also need to build your brand on Facebook to get better results from that same activity, okay? And it's this kind of goes along the way of farming. I think realtors all know that you gotta farm your markets, right? You got like three or four farm areas, you're gonna do everything you can to, to tackle those areas. But one thing that re real estate agents have not figured out is that Facebook is the number one place where they can be in front of those people because 71% of adults in the United States are on Facebook. Not teenagers, but adults. And so if you can tell those people, I'm a realtor, I got an open house, I have a home just listed, I have something I just sold, and I can do that in about five minutes for a few bucks, that is what makes seller lead generation huge. And, and as I tell you, I don't know how many people sign up on our site, 10, 20 a day, okay? And a lot of people come just for this page. And they figure out what I just showed you. Copy this, paste it there, change the picture, boom, great. And I got 20 leads or 30 leads and that's awesome, right? And then people will get on our training calls and they're gonna listen to what I'm about to tell you. 
And they say, oh, I'm going to do what Vince and Scott are saying. And then they're like, wow, you know what? In about two to three months, I started getting more leads with higher quality, deeper information. And it's because they built their brand on Facebook. People started to understand that, yeah, this guy is, an, this, you know, this person is a realtor because I can see him all over Facebook. And now they're saying they can help me get my home value. I am going to fill that out. And this is how they do it. They get their listings, even if they're borrowed listings, okay? If you're a realtor and you guys, I'm sure, have realtors that are new and maybe they got one listing, they can borrow listings and get them in their account and they get tools that look like this. And mine are all just sold and that doesn't make sense, but we'll kind of click on a single property website. And this is what one of our core tools look like, okay? Um, and in this case, it's just sold, so there's a little banner up here. It's gonna have your office logo. It's gonna have pictures of the home and it's gonna have the contact information for the agent. But, you know, even though my phone number's there, nobody wants to talk to me, but they are interested in something about this home. In this case, there's automatic lead gen pops up, so you, you know, can do that. But remember we were talking about those side links I showed you on that property valuation page? These are the same kinds of links. Actually, that's my home value, what's my homework? But if I click on Naples Homes for three to 500K, of course I point to one of my clients' dead websites. I should actually fix that. You'll see what happens with Fort Myers. Uh, so, this just points to your website. And John, I know you're asking, can we point to agents' websites? By all means, right? So when an agent is marketing a tool, first to tell everybody, hey, I'm associated to real, uh, to real estate. I have a home that's just sold, or I have an open house, or I have something you know, just listed or coming soon, which is super awesome. Then it's, it's marketing, it's looking good, it's mobile optimized, and there's all these lead generation links. If they don't want this particular home, is there something, is there a hot neighborhood they can click on here? Is there a price point that means something to me, the consumer? And that's why this thing generates so many leads, okay? So over here on the left, I actually, there's a little red acronym. This is active, A for active, and this is coming soon. So if I click on a, com on a coming soon, it says right here, oh, this one's coming soon, right? And that's the nature. There's, if you're going to build your brand, you want to run it. it uh, you can run the same home different times under contract. Um, maybe you want to run it just sold, you know, or so just just listed. Vince, just stop here. Yeah. Um, just sold and under contract. Will that automatically upload into each agent's dashboard? because it's connected to the MLS? Sometimes it does. What, what typically happens, because it kind of depends on your MLS, if we, as we get these listings from ListHub, the one thing that we know is some MLSs, they just drop, they just stop delivering it. And at that point, we leave the listing here, but we give, a, we give an automated email to the agent and it says, this listing just went pending or sold. And in the email, it says, click here, to, to update it and then boom, they can update it from their email and it says, yeah, this home is under contract and they click under contract. And at that point, we automatically email them the flyer and the ad and this one it's under deposit, right? So, and in that these, the vernacular is based on what your, what your MLS rules are, but you can actually select it right out of your email, not even log into listings to leads. And once you save it, it pushes to our system and then our system emails a tool to the agent and they can take action with it. They can forward out the email, they can send a, an ad to their client, or they can just take a single property website and put it up on Facebook and say, hey, I want to run an ad on this real quick. How do you get it coming soon in there? And Manually. You know, assuming you want to... Manually. If you, post. If you want to do okay, coming so soon, to you go right here to create new listing. And you know, we're not okay. like the MLS. We, you know, we want to, maybe you have a photo and we just want some basic data points, yeah. right? Yeah. The address and stuff like that. You would use that for buyer traffic, obviously. Totally, totally. And you know what, if you can do that, if your MLS allows that, you definitely want to have, to, to use coming soon because inventory is tight across the country for you to say, hey, this isn't even on the MLS, click here to look at it. But we, one of our clients actually has not only, they, I don't know how they do it, but they have like a little web page on their website that says, um, it's all their coming soon. So when they're running an ad, 
and it says coming soon, they'll have a link over here. This one is pointing to my What Is Your Homework, but it'll say, see all coming soon. And it points right to their website, right? And that's, a, that's cool too. But I think coming soon advertising is awesome because it's really hard to find the right home right now. So, yeah. um, so the, that's one of the key tools to doing that branding. First of all, and, and one more thing, this home is just sold. I'm gonna click, but if you click here, you can change it to under deposit or well, for lease, coming soon, right? So all the, stat, the statuses are right here. And what I wanna show you is, so the single property website, like I, I keep saying, it is, um, let's just change this to come to see if I can do that. Just list it down. What is this? Okay. So it's saying it's that if I'm doing it coming soon, it's saying, what is the just list date? So I'm going to save this and there are two, and I don't know if you can see this. There's an e-flyer that just came to me. Let's look at what this is. And it, this is a result from the audit because I just changed that coming soon. So it's like kicking me a tool automatically. Right. So you notice how I just changed that to coming soon. And it says, this is the e-flyer. This is kind of our core tool stuff, right? But the e-flyer for every home has all those lead generation links that I keep talking about. It has your contact info. And then it has a picture of the home and it says coming soon, right? So we'll get into that, but I'm just showing you how the automation works, okay? There's over here to the right is a button. There's a Facebook button and there's this listing landing page. And I wanna click on this because this is one of the other tools that people use to market and to build their brand. And as you can see, it says it's coming soon. And it also, you know, this could say just listed or open house or just sold, but it's a really good looking piece. So when somebody clicks on it from Facebook, they land on something that really is going to benefit your brand because it's like, oh, well, I don't know who these people are, but you know, it looks good. So do you see how I got that? Would you like me to run this ad one more time so we can see how to do this? We can do, do it a little bit quicker. How's that? Let's copy this link at the top. And let's go over here to create an ad. And we're doing the same thing, right? We're going to send people to our website. And we click on the blue button there and it pushes it up and we ignore the pixels and we say set ad budget, right? And I'm going to define a new audience and I'm going to say, ah, oh, this time I am going to do Huntersville. Okay. And, and because I actually like it's, if I want, if I'm a realtor, I want people to know that I'm a realtor outside of Huntersville because I'm going to, I might want to do business over there in Cornelius. Right. Uh, and so that's what I'm doing. I might want a minimum age of, let's just say 25, but you can, you know, I'll do 24 since there. Um, I'm going to ignore the rest, but this time I'm going to change my lifetime budget to 20, 20 bucks. And this one, it's giving me a red signal because it's too far out. And I'm going to say, well, I'm starting it today and this would be great. Let's say, let, let's just say it was an open house and, and it's going to be on Sunday. Well, you can run it that long, right? And, and it's still giving me a red mark because five bucks is the minimum, right? So because I'm running it for five days, it's saying, hey, it's gotta be a minimum that it's it sort of stopped. So for here, you're gonna see I'm spending less money. I've got a smaller reach, right? But for 25 bucks, there's gonna be, I don't know, almost 2,500 people that will see this. And that's really the key to building that brand. And this is the whole point of why you need to spend a few dollars throughout the month. And it, to say, I have open houses, I have homes coming soon, and I have homes just listed, and I have homes 
just sold. And in all of that, that starts to tell my target market, my farm area, um, I am a realtor. So that when I invest more money for getting your home value, more people click more and more people give you their actual contact information. One thing here, when you run these kinds of ads, it gives you this boilerplate information, get the current price. This is not very compelling. So if you're gonna run an ad like this, there is something great about the house you're selling. I don't know what it is. It could be the neighborhood, it could be the new granite kitchen, it could be anything, you know, and, and I don't know what it is, but you've gotta take just a couple minutes to write that right there in that box. And then on this case, all I really want you to do is remove that desktop audience and you can test out if uh, desktop right column. You can see if Instagram's working for you. Um, but definitely, if you're running ads to tell people you're a realtor, definitely do it on mobile. Because what you're trying to do, you know, if you're, a, if you're a standard realtor, how many thousands of people find out that you're a realtor every month? Right, I, I don't know what that number is, but in this case, thousands of people are gonna see this, and if you're running four or five ads a month, that, that starts to build up on itself, and that's the whole point of what I'm talking about right here, is that they start to get familiar with you as a brand, not here as listings to leads, but as you, the realtor, and then you start saying, hey, if you want your home value, click here, and that's when things- So our agents will be there, and there'll be their picture and name? Totally. Where those yep. says Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Great. And you know, because I, when you think of 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 advertising, and 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 you know, we have so many. There are so many areas where you can spend money in real estate, right? Uh, one of the big things is Zillow and, and Trulia. A lot of people that's just a that's been a, a model for a while. Um, and what it really is based on is if somebody is looking at a zip code of in real estate. I want to be in front of that, right? And so that's like, yeah, that's the farm that I'm going at. Well, granted, that is 300 bucks, and maybe that is, I don't know, 20 leads a month, and then maybe they sold those leads to four other agents at the same exact time. But that is one of the paradigms that people have been doing for a while. Instead, folks are saying, look, I'm going to take that same 300 bucks. So ends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple of our team members have done some research and found a couple niche counties nationally areas parts of the country where it seems that uh charlotte north carolina has really kind of taken off in the minds of people and, and a lot of people are moving from certain pockets yeah. what suggestion would you have for a single property site to kind of in facebook targeting for that kind of market for that type of system well so i guess what that means is you don't actually have listings so you want to build your business in Charlotte, but my guess is you don't have listings in Charlotte. It, yeah, so like something like uh, a single property, say coming to, uh, interested in moving to Charlotte, North Carolina, and then something that directs traffic to the agent if they have questions. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, then you do the zip codes or the counties. Yeah. In terms of the Facebook. In, in terms of Facebook, you can certainly target people, but but I'll tell you. So there's a couple of there's two halves to that one question. Okay, one and and one of them is the Facebook aspect. How do you manipulate Facebook to get in front of those kinds of folks? And the other is, yeah. what kind of tool do I get from listings to leads to to get get in front of them? Because you don't have listings at that very point of time, right? And so you kind of right. you kind of have to watch. So. You're gonna to have to think about that. I'm gonna give you my first idea of what I think you would want to do, and that's a market report. And right here, you can see that my status is MR, and that's for market report. And the market report, click on the single property website to look at it. It looks like a single property website. It's all hanging on the same software, okay? And what it's doing is it's scrolling through properties. And you, when you're creating the market report, you can actually say, hey, um, you choose your properties, right? You can say, I want to pull this one in from that market. I want to put maybe a FISBO from that market and I want to do a pocket listing or whatever. But you can, yeah, I think you can put up to six 
properties in here. I think for me, I have one, but if there were more, it would just scroll through these properties. But notice that this market report has some basic information down here at the bottom. And you can edit this, and it's actually pre-written so that it's saying, here are the medians, right? So it's it kind of looks like a market report because it's got just a little bit of information. When, when we look at market reports, and I'm sorry, it's not formatted correctly. It's not formatted correctly because I didn't edit it properly. Let's see if I can do that. When we look at market reports, we can see that um, that what's going on is realtors like to put out things there that are like super, you, you got to read, right? You just got to read and read and read. And people are not really into that. They're, they're, it's just not what's happening. So you can see here, I can add more properties. I only have one here. Um, but in ours, we want to, we kind of boilerplate, we put that information and it's there for the agent to change. This being said, you can actually set up a market report for Charlotte and you could push it. You can, there's a button to say, push this to my agents. And here I've got it in black. And so at least it looks kind of the same, but it, I could have changed it to white as well. So we give you this content. We just say, you fill in the information that is underlined. And then at that point, you just edit and save. But everything around here, you see this link up here, it says, see your home value now. This is a, a lead capture for, for what is your home worth. Over here, this is a link to my landing page for property valuation, right? Over here could be a link directly to your agent's website. So this is a good kind of tool to be talking about what's going on in Charlotte and just say, yeah, let's, let's run this out and then let's go over to Facebook and let's run an ad. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. So, go ahead. Yeah. If you're, let's just say you're a realtor in Charlotte and you want to spend 50 bucks over the weekend to bring buyer traffic from Long Island, New York, or people that could potentially be moving to Charlotte. Yeah. How would you personally approach to get best bang for your buck using your tool? Yeah, that's a great. So first of all, I would create a tool like this, right? And I would have these links over here on the left. I would say Charlotte Homes from three to 500, Charlotte homes from five to 700, whatever the big price points where you know people are buying, I would be having those yeah. links talk about that on the left, okay? The, uh, but the real question, I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna run one more ad on Facebook and I'm gonna show you one of the limitations of what I know, but I will point you in the right direction, okay? Um, you're gonna create an ad just the exact same way So let's do it. And I'm gonna, everything is the same, but it's targeting those people. And that's tricky and I don't know that and that is my limitation. I This is what I do know. I have clients doing this. And usually those clients are in Florida. I got one client um, and again, it's the Neil Wolf story. I, I told you about Neil who's, uh, who's, uh, who's uh, using our stuff on, uh, Craigslist. He also, and I'll tell you a story and then you'll understand what it is. So I want to include, um, I don't know if you'd even, if you'd even do Charlotte, but I don't think you'd even put Charlotte here because what would happen is if this would make the ad only visible to Charlotte and you kind of said something like people who live up in the North, right? New York or New Jersey, yeah. right? And so that's where the yeah, Long Island, New York, or, yeah, or exactly, Rochester, exactly. New York. this area, this comes in here, right? And you can say, well, let's browse people on behaviors and interests. You could say that, and, and I don't know what it is. And again, this is my limitation. So I, I don't know exactly what they're doing, but they are using something in interest or in behaviors. Um, Travel is one of them. Travel is related. So you can actually um, target, and you'll have to kind of fish through here. And I'll give you a story of, of how this can kind of work. So Neil Wolf. So Vince, I'm, I'm confused. Would it just be easier just to put the name of the city in the location, and it's going to go to people within the demographics you set in that yeah, location? Yeah, that's that is where it's confusing. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm gonna do that. And I'm going to show you what. This, yeah, I'm going to show you what you just said. 
What you're telling me is, Vince, I want to target people that live. Uh, this is for, uh, uh, I want to build my business in Charlotte. And this is like no. the way I do it. But what you're actually saying, what this ad does at this point is this only shows this ad to people who live within 10 miles of Charlotte. You're actually saying, I want people who are living in, in Long Island or New Jersey or, or, or wherever to, to see this right. ad and say that I have something in Charlotte. That's a different kind of ad, right? So you could say, so what you could say is I want to include, I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to say add location, New Jersey. And I think it's like this, New Jersey, United States. And I want, and again, I, you're seeing where I am. Uh, my interest is travel to Charlotte, right? It's some, I, I don't know where it is, but that's really, it might be behaviors that I, I am interested in that area, right? And frequent, uh, let's see. And I don't, you can see I'm sort of clicking through here, right? Or, or, or um, yeah, it's fine. I don't know what it is, but I can tell you like this guy, Neil Wolf, who's down in Naples, Florida, does exactly this. And he's from Chicago. So he feels like I want to advertise to people in Chicago who come down here that I have condos because they're going to want to work with somebody who knows their neighborhood and knows what they think and stuff like that. And that's exactly what he does with this. Okay. So how is he again? That guy, <laughs> Neil, it, it, funny, Neil is a, a, an older gentleman who has been in real estate, not even four years. And he is getting uh, five or 700 leads a month. He's doing it only with Facebook and the Craigslist tool that I was mentioning. And I'm going to show you that, that tool in a minute. But unfortunately, I don't know the magic of how to target people in the, what you're asking for right there, right? No, that's fine. It is somewhere in here. And you might, you can certainly, key, what's that? Even if you didn't break it down by behaviors, you'd still get back your buck if you put a zip code in there that you know that a lot of people are moving to your market from. Totally. And just, just spend there within whatever age group, you're going to get back your buck more than likely, yes? Totally, yes, yes. But there is some there is some value in those behaviors. I just don't know that. I'm just not too familiar with that's that. That's why. Okay. So okay, so that's that's like Facebook, and that is super powerful and that is super awesome. Now, not everybody will want to do that, but if somebody is really intent on growing their business, then I totally recommend that. Before we get into the core tools, since we were talking about Neil, I am gonna go over to remember I, I said this guy's generating a bunch of leads. And he's doing a lot of it from Craigslist. So what he does on the listings page are these buttons on the left. You can create a new listing. You can grab a listing. You can <clears throat> create a new ma market report up here. Um, but there's this tab that says listing websites. And this is a website that shows, I'm going to click on the link here. It shows all of the listings in your account. So if you're an office and you click that button, it's all the listings in your account. There's also a similar one for all open houses. I don't know if you if your office holds open houses, but you would have. There's a similar page that just shows the current open houses. But you'll know that this is in this case it's an agent. So every agent has this page over on the right. There's what a home value lead capture. On the left are the links pointing to their website. And every time anybody clicks any on any of these, the single property website for this property pops up. Okay. So that's a really cool tool. And what I want to show you is, again, this guy from Florida, what he does with it, okay? So Neil, when he started working with us, I set up the office over here in Naples uh, a while back. Um, he wasn't even on, the, on management's radar until he started coming and saying, I'm getting 50 leads a day from putting this tool buried in listings to leads on Craigslist. And I'm going to show you what it looks like, and I'm going to show you what he's doing. But people are clicking these links, and a lot of these, you see this lease purchase option. This is a squeeze page that he built, customized in our system. Okay, you can build a page that looks like this in our platform. 
uh, get pre-approved. Similar kind of deal, right? You can see it's the same stuff. He's just putting in a, you can tell it's just copy and paste for, for what you're doing, right? And of course, new construction, I think he's pointing to his website and all he did there was put some pictures of, of, of uh, what do you call it? Uh, new construction logos. And that's what it is. And then you can, you know, so he's got all kinds of leads happening from throughout the, this section and this section. So the key is, what does he do with it? Okay, how is he getting this in front of the market? And I'm going to show you this because a lot, this is a Craigslist deal. And he blew me away because you probably don't know this about us. When we started this company, we were a one tool shop. We had a one click posting tool to Craigslist. Craigslist was super hot. We could embed links that would drive to your agent's websites. The ads looked like awesome. They looked like a full web page on Craigslist and an agent just had to click. That's why we were a partner of List Hub. That's why we were brought in as a partner for Keller Williams. That's why we were embedded in 250 offices in Windermere because we could just kill it with Craigslist. And then Craigslist like flipped upside down and that's not really relevant. But we took that technology and we laid it into all of our tools like this because people click on links and we know it. So in the state of Florida, in this Fort Myers Southwest area, in apartments and housing, if you do a search on Wolf or Wolfpack, you will see all of Neil's ads. And I want to point out these ads to you because they're not very exciting. It's a rental. And here's something about it. I'd say three out of four times, there is not even a photograph in this ad. But what he's doing on every ad is he's saying, you can go to Neil Knows Naples for more information. And if I right click on Neil Knows Naples, it is a URL that he bought at GoDaddy. It points to this page. So he's putting multiple ads on Craigslist and people are, you know, it's harder for consumers. If you know anything about Craigslist, it became almost impossible for realtors um, about two years ago. It's equally as difficult for a consumer to get to a realtor. Um, so what we see from all of our clients who are participate, participating on Craigslist is they're getting fewer leads with higher conversion. And this guy is the number one lead generator on Craigslist from our clients. Uh, and a lot of people are trying to emulate what he is doing. And I just kind of showed you what he is doing there, okay? Um, you might want to do that. It just depends on what your business is like, right? But if I was a new agent, man, I'd be jumping on this. And he was basically a new agent and he found this. He's like, I don't have a lot of listings. I can't do a lot of stuff. So what can I find? And he found that and he just applied it and is just killing it. So this here is our listings page. And now we're going to talk about what you do when you actually have a listing, okay? And this is the core stuff. So at a high level, you can click this blue button to edit your listing. You can click this to add lead generation links. Those are the side links. And those links are going to be different, right? If you've got a home for sale in Charlotte, those are going to be different than the links that you want to show on a listing in Huntersville. If you want to set up an open house for any of those, you click this, you save the date, and boom, it, we email you a stack of tools. There's a single property website that we've been looking at. There's a similar looking virtual tour. We'll look at it in a minute. If you've got your office set up for YouTube on the profile, we'll auto upload to your YouTube channel. And then we've got a series of e-flyers and Facebook ads from coming soon, just listed, open house, price reduced, under contract, and sold for both the email and Facebook. And that's a unique part of what we do. So we, were, we will spend a minute there. Then there's the listing landing page that I showed you earlier. Uh, great for Facebook advertising. If you're doing any kind of blog work, um, there's a ton of tools that you can use for all of your listings for blogs. If you're not a big blogger, I don't recommend getting into blogging, but certainly if you are, then you want to have some really great tools with lead generation. Links. By all means, look at that. Then, of course, you can post your ads to Craigslist by clicking this button. So. Let's just click through and look very quickly at some of the stuff here. I'm going to click the edit button. Uh, like I said, you can put the open house here. You can change your images here. If people are getting like professional photography and they want to put that in, it's, it's smart to just go here and edit. And, and then those get pushed into the virtual tour as well. Uh, there's also, um, let's see here. 
So this is the big piece right here. It is the lead generation links. And this is like, <clears throat> if, it, and this is a little bit weird. I think we are the only company that will do this, that has done this for realtors um, in real estate advertising. And we click this green button. And I think the reason why we're the only ones is that it's a real pain. You know, it's a pain to create it. And it's just such a heavy lift to get agents to understand what it is. But the value is really great because this is what we know and I think you know and Realtor.com and Nar have been talking about it for years is that one out of 400 people that sees your home online will want that particular home, right? Your homes are on Zillow and Trulia and people are just clicking and clicking and clicking next, 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 next. and. And that's just the way the world is. We're the only company that says, hey, if they clicked on it, we know they're interested in property. So let's give them something that's going to you know, ring a bell for them. Maybe it's Buffalo Homes under 300K. Maybe it's an awesome neighborhood like the Lees Valley. You know, these kinds of ideas, you build them and you choose them at the listing level. And you say, okay, I want these links to be on this property because there's a hot neighborhood there or something like that. And you set it and they flow through all these tools from then on. So then we go here and we go to the single property website. The single property website is automatically emailed as soon as it hits our tool. As soon as it hits our database, we associate the links that, are, uh, that the agent has configured to be associated. And we email this link to the agent in their email. All they have to do and what they should do is they should share this to their social media accounts. Like I said earlier, Facebook is the number one place to share, right? For lead gen. Pinterest is number two. We've got clients that are posting to LinkedIn and just getting full on listings from this, right? Just because nobody's doing this on LinkedIn and suddenly it's like, oh yeah, I can tell you're a realtor. Help, I wanna sell my house, right? All you have to do when you're doing something like this, when you're sharing to Facebook, to, to, to Twitter, LinkedIn, is put something social. Don't just slap a link out there. Put something that's gonna make me feel like you're a person and hey, here's a great home in an awesome neighborhood and it's got all this and that so that I just don't gla just blast by it. And for you to write that might take you a minute. And you just go through these buttons here and you're on all the major social networks and you're very likely gonna get leads. Maybe not from all of them, maybe not from every listing and maybe not all the time, but. We've got clients coming at us saying, I'm getting leads from LinkedIn, from Twitter, from, from, from Pinterest, and of course from Facebook. And so this is how you get this tool there. You just click the share buttons. Here's my Facebook one. And I can say, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever I want to say, you know, great home, et cetera, et cetera. Sold for above asking, right? And that's all those, all that kind of stuff there. That gets emailed automatically. And at the very same time, this uh, virtual tour gets sent to them, branded virtual tour, in the same email. It's a link. All they can do, they can click on it, they can look at it, but they can also share this if they wish. Um, but the number one thing we want to see people do with our branded virtual tours is to copy the link. And for you, because you're with an independent boutique brokerage, put it directly on their listing on Zillow and Trulia. Because if their listing is on Zillow and Trulia and people look at it, if they're remotely interested, if it's in the right price in town, they, they might look at it. Just what can I get for 400 right here? And when they click on it, obviously it's got lead generation links all over the place. And it kind of gets people away from Zillow and Trulia, right? So that now they're stuck in your platform. They're being driven to your website. And that's what we want people to do. I will send you instructions on a, a quick outline on this, uh, but that's, get your branded virtual tour, obviously make sure it's got the right lead generation links and get it into high traffic areas. And the number, you know, especially if you can get it on Zillow and Trulia because people do tend to go look their properties fair amount. Again, configure your YouTube account, will auto upload to your YouTube account. And then these tools, as I said, the virtual tour and the single property website get emailed automatically. And it also comes with this tool. It comes with a seller engagement email. So let's look at this and let's talk about it. So this actually shows up in one email. It will be your banner. It'll be a few images of the home and it's gonna say it's being marketed, right? And it talks, 
it's really kind of lengthy. We did not, we, we don't want this to be short because it's basically your branding. It's your agent, it's your logo, it's your banner up top. And we want the homeowner to know that we are doing a ton to market your home. We're on Google, we're on WordPress, we've got Craigslist, we've got mobile, we got email. We're, you know, we're just all over the place. And we want to engage that seller so that they know everything you're doing because in going forward, there are going to be tools automatically sent to the agent that we want them to go to the seller, right? And here's one, and, and just to explain what this is, this is a virtual tour. And this, again, this is one of those things about listings to leads that is totally unique to real estate marketing. At the top of the flyer is a message pre-written to say, we have hired, let's just say John Costello, Castan, uh, Costello Realty, and he's created this and other tools to increase the marketing. We'd appreciate it if you could forward this to as many people as you can to help us sell our home, right? So this is designed for the homeowner, automatically goes to the agent, gives it to the homeowner, give a quick five second phone call. We just sent you a Facebook ad and an e-flyer. If you could forward that on, it'll help us get more buyers and we'll sell your home faster. That's, that's really what we're after. And of course it talks about the home, right? And here's all the pictures and all this and that. But there's also just lead generation links built right into this that if the person doesn't want that particular home or maybe they want their home value, they can click and get right into your system. So this is, the, I think, the only company in, in, in real estate advertising that does this. Um, it is a little bit of hard work. It is one of those things that confuses agents you know, up and down. But once they get their, their, their arms around it, they can understand it. And the thing that really excites real estate agents is not necessarily what happens when we look at an e-flyer for like, here's my virtual tour e-flyer. It's the just sold. And so the just sold, let's view this. This is what it looks like in an email. It gets automatically sent to the agent. And what it is is a pre-written testimonial. Our home is just sold. We want to recommend Vince Mays at LL Realty. Here's his name and phone number. Check it out, leave a comment. So this is what we want the homeowners to do after they sell. Again, this is all automated. As long as the agent- Does the agent just, the agent just forward that message to the seller or does it come automatically? It, you can forward it to the seller. It comes automatically to the agent, they can forward it. There is also a, a button where these tools, I'll show you in a second, can go, these tools can go from the agent's email directly to the seller. I don't recommend that in the beginning because okay. you're, you don't know what's happening. You really don't know the rhythm, the message, and the style of what we do. So, you know, run for a month or two where, where, where the agents are getting familiar with it, right? And, all, and, and this is what it looks like, right? And an agent needs to know kind of how that's gonna work because what the agent should do is post this, is get this in their email, send it to their client, and say, um, call that client, say, hey, I just sent you a couple tools. If you could put that up, up on Facebook, on your wall, and, and if you could send it up that email, that'd be awesome. The reason being is, you know, online lead generation is awesome, that's what we focus on, but referrals are golden. And, oh, yeah. you know, if, if your clients at an agent level, just think of it as an agent, if your clients are taking this you can see it's posted from me, Vincent Mesa, but in, in what, what we prefer is this is going from your client saying, hey friends, I just worked with Vincent Mesa and he sold my home, right? That is basically seeding that client's sphere of influence with multiple messages from coming soon, ideally, to just listed, to open house, to under contract and just sold, right? That's really, and, and if they do it on Facebook, if they're on Facebook, they probably got two to 300 other friends have no idea your agents are in real estate, right? They just don't even know that. They are going to get that idea. So at the agent level, it really works that well. At the office level, if you've got homes in three or four different towns and these people are all on Facebook, your target market are going to start seeing recommendations and, and people talking about your agents in office multiple times, assuming that they follow these steps, right? get four of the things on and give a quick five tech and second courtesy call and, and let it go, right? And, and, and ask them to do it. Now, 
when we click on the eFlyer button for any listing, there is this weird green button, send directly to seller. This button here, again, after you get started, will allow, you can actually put in the client's email address and put, you know, say, you know, dear John, right? And, and then start sending the referral and lead generation flyers automatically. So these tools come from the agent's email address directly to the, to the client and the agent doesn't have to even touch it. What the agent should do or somebody should do is pick up the phone and call that client and say, hey, we just sent you a couple of tools. Because you know we all get God knows how much spam every day. And this stuff will just get buried, yeah. right? If you can just for five, 10 seconds call and say, hey, we just sent you a couple of tools. You could put that on your Facebook wall or, you know, or, or do this, uh, put in an email, that would be great. And of course, you're going to have those, those older clients that don't have a computer or, or, or Facebook. We've even seen our clients say, I'm going to give it to my kids and the kids blow it out and then and everybody's just getting it out there because they want to get their home you know parents home sold so that's the nature of this these tools are automatically generated and they're just designed to generate leads and referrals those things are they just sort of flow out of the system when the listing hits the whole situation begins uh, over here to the right you know that's the listing landing page that's better for you know Facebook pay-per-click ads um, and then Craigslist, right? You post over, you click here, there's a little video sh show you how to post to Craigslist and here's the tool to use it. Um, I'm gonna go over to one other thing that I wanted to show you earlier. It's in my mastermind group, if you click on photos, I'll try to send you an image of this um, because it's a, re you know, this is a total reversal in, in conversation. Um, there are when we talked about the property valuation thing um there are some there's a really cool template that one of our clients put in here and i want you to be aware of it um and so i will email it to you let's see here where is it come on there he is this is a just listed postcard and you might have a just sold but this works really really well um because it doesn't cost a ton to create them and you won't do it with, with every house but one side has your logo and your contact info talks about the house the other side says get your home value and again this client has bought a url from godaddy and they're pointing it to maybe his huntersville page right that's the this is a, when we talk about seller lead gen we always do it electronically but the cool thing about our clients is they take our tools and they do different things that we don't even think of like this and they get great results out of it this has been they do this over and over our clients keep jumping on this and john are you part of our mastermind group i am okay so that means i should be able to find you yeah so i just tagged you in that and you can sort of see that <clears throat> download and maybe it'll help you improvise something for uh, your office so those are the core tools and those are the core, you know, this is how you tackle Facebook, right? I, sh I showed you that up top at the beginning of the call. Um, do you have any questions? No, so, I mean, that was a great summary, man, an hour and a half. Um, hmm. I, I think you've given us, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you've given us enough to play with it, and then we need a quick follow-up call we can do it but i think this is enough for us to play with your system yeah get familiar with it um and really be able to put the pieces together on our own the training is pretty thorough are we missing anything from your perspective not really there's one uh, well a couple uh, i just kind of a little bit of a uh, couple things to, to know um do you do you guys do any video work not really yet we'd like to get into it but not yet so uh I, I'll tag you on another thing that, that I posted yesterday. If you do, and even simple video is like whip out your smartphone when a client's in there and, and you've sold the home for them and just get a testimonial in two minutes. Upload it to YouTube and you can use it right here to say create cat tab content, paste in the YouTube video and call it client testimonials, right? And you, you can paste in the YouTube and you can say, I want that testimonial tab to be on all listing so if i were an agent you definitely want to do that actually let me jump over real quick 
Um, we like video because it's sticky. People stay longer. The people, longer people stay on our tools, the more likelihood there is of lead junk. So we want any kind of video to be sort of in there. If your agents have questions, there is a contact support page. You can get questions here. If you guys have questions, especially for you know first few months, ping me really quick. If I can't handle it because I'm like on the phone all the time, I'll get it to support and we'll get it taken care of. But a lot of fast answers are right here. Um, I am going to show you, and then I'll let you guys go. Uh, let's see here. And real quick while you're looking there, um, I looked in follow up and it looks like they connect with you guys. Are you from, do you have a, is there anything we should keep mind of from other customers that you're aware of that use the follow up boss here? Well, we have a lot of clients that use follow up boss. Um, the leads flow well to it and everything, yeah. no issues, yeah. contact information. That's right. The, where you do that is, is you cool. go to an agent profile and you put this alternative email number two, paste in your email and say send leads to. So for the office account, for the brokerage account or this is leads brokerage account, we need to just put our, whatever our office account email is for follow-up boss, correct? Yeah, that's right. But... You may be thinking something, so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna show you what I wanted to show you real quick. Uh, this is a single property website, open house. This client here has, if you click on client testimonials, has an embedded YouTube video right here, and they're big on. I mean, you know, this takes you right to YouTube, and I and then over here, this takes you to their testimonial page. So that's just one way. I saw that recently. I thought, wow, that's pretty awesome. So. When you're thinking of lead gen, you know, you're because you have asked me questions like if we're sending this over to, if we're sending the traffic to the agent site, on the profile for the office, you either send leads to the broker or to the agent. And if you want to be copied on, aid, on leads from agents, which I'm not sure if you do, um, you would your email would have to be at the agent page too because we either send leads to the agent or to the office you lost me okay. let me let me uh what are you saying? for the brokerage account we just wanted to funnel any leads for the brokerage account needs to funnel through follow up boss so we would use our oh okay follow up okay. boss so that's if you're running things as the office right you're running ads for yeah, that's the, problem, but the agents. I would just assume they would put in their email address yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. CRM they totally right, totally right. That's right. Okay. I, yeah, so you go to your profile, and we've got an email here which is yours. You don't have anything checked, but you might say, I want my follow up boss email right here, and yeah, I'll I would just send leads to right here. Okay. Do you recommend doing it too, the, my regular email and then the follow-up boss email on the alternative or just one? Uh, in this case, uh, for, for this, this is the office profile. I would just have the follow-up boss email. For your, if okay. you've got an agent account and you're running leads for yourself or running ads for yourself, you would want both, kind of like you see it here. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to get this... Uh, Web, this webinar up online and I'll send you a link uh, if you have questions Anna you know how to get in touch with me John of course you do too um, just let me know yes right I think we're just waiting for list hub to turn on right right okay but you still can log in and, and access and yeah. start doing Facebook stuff if you want as well right okay okay everybody thanks a lot is there anything what's up once list hub is there anything we need to do? Do we need to get back in contact with you or we're good to go? You should get an email from ListHub saying your inventory is now in. Forward that to me and I'll go look and we'll get and okay. we'll get things going. Because we at that point your listing starts showing up in the feed and we can then map, put the codes in where they need to be so automation just starts happening. Okay. 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 So you'll see. Thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Vince. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. That's your sense is recording.